Hello crafty friends, this is the Paper Chef here. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this little party favor box as an alternative paper pumpkin project. Okay, so first thing is that shout out goes to my friend Sandra, Sandra Lowe. She actually taught me how to make this recently at one of our team Zoom meetings. Okay, so she, she showed this and then I, I had to do, it was a lot of practice. It was a lot of practice and I think I finally mastered it. I can't teach something until I master it. Okay, so we're going to just talk about the measurements. I'm going to talk about how I cut this and how I score it. And then we're just going to give it a try. Okay, so this is, now it doesn't have to be an alternative paper pumpkin project. This can actually be any kind of hygienic, it can be any kind of designer series paper. It's just that this works really good with cardstock. And it really holds up well with cardstock. That's why I think it's a great alternative paper pumpkin project. But of course, you can use any designer series paper you have, any two kinds of designer series paper. Okay, so I've, I've, I have lots of pieces here from all my practice, my practice runs. Hi, Nancy. Okay, oh, look, lots of people joining me at this strange time. Okay, so right in, this is going to be like right in time for giving somebody a little party favor on New Year's Eve, right? All right, so thank you, Janet, Yvonne, Nancy, Angels. So what you need is you need, just, just to go over this, and then I'll go get then I'll get stuff out of my paper pumpkin kit. So you need to, to follow along and I hope you can follow along. You need two pieces of designer series paper or in this case two pieces two cards from your paper pumpkin kit. Okay? And I, like I said cardstock works better. Okay? So one piece it's a very easy party favor but it just, you know, I'm just going to give you a couple of tips and tricks. One piece you're going to, you know, just cut and you're going to score. So that's it. You don't have to, like, you're just going to cut out the piece and score it a couple times and you're good to go. The other piece, you're going to cut into to the size, but then you're going to also trim these little edges off. Okay? And so that's the big, the, the big picture. And then once you're done, you're going to go like this. You're going to put one inside the other. You're going to adhere that, right? That's the pretty pattern. You're going to adhere one inside the other and you're going to go like that and overlap them and tie it together. Simple, simple party favor. You can do it with any designer series paper you have. So let's get our let's get started and see how I did it with this this card. You just need two styles of paper, right? You need like like one. You don't want to use don't use the same card for each piece. You want you want two different cards, okay? Hi Sheila. All right, so here are my cards, and you know how I like to do cut things at once. So we'll we'll cut a couple at once, and then we'll have some pieces. Okay, so here are the pieces I'm using. Now, it says here to take to get two pieces of, and I'll put this in the description too because I need to move this away. I need to move this piece of paper away. But it says start with two pieces of two inch by eight inch designer series paper. Okay, so knowing that, let's move. The, let's get my paper trimmer. Okay, here's my. Oh, and I have this. I have these sitting here to show you too. So if you missed my last video. On YouTube, put that here, put this paper trimmer here. I did show, before this one, I showed how to create boxes out of a card. So this is another alternative paper pumpkin project. So if you missed it, be sure to check out the video. I just did yesterday, the day before, it's all blurring together because I'm in a different time zone. So anyway, it's I just did it, my the, the video right be, prior to this one. I showed how to create these little boxes out of cards. Okay, so if you want to know how to make a box out of a card, watch that video. I went into very deep. I went into a lot of detail. I gave measurements for these two kinds of boxes, and I did it a couple times at a couple different angles. Very detailed, so don't miss that. All right, so now we're gonna do this party favor. So it says two inch by eight inch. So first thing I'd like to do, I did is I just cut my two inch pieces. Okay, so here's my paper trimmer, and I got my two inch pieces of my card. You can make two and an, uh, a little bit extra out of one. So you can make, here, let me show you. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm just going to cut two of these, two inches. And then you have an extra one you can make. You don't try to make a mini party favor out of this. It doesn't work very well, but you can make this into a bookmark. Um, you can make it into a tag treat. So you can make, so you have extra pieces there. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and trim these. Well, I got my trimmer like ready for two inches. 
So two inches. Get out those paper trimmers. The best way to learn to do something, I think, is by doing it. That's my motto. You, once you learn something, if you try it, like I was trying it when she was doing it on the Zoom call. And, you know, I, I, I was able to sort of follow along with Sandra. And then, then I went back and did it later. And it, I was able to, to make it work. Okay, so that's good for now, just now. I'm going to take, so I want to take the ends off, though. So because it says 2 inch by 8 inch, but this happens to be, so I'm going to turn my trimmer. I'm going to open up my trimmer. I mean, not turn it. Okay, these happen to be 8. These are cards, right? These are card pieces. So they happen to be 8 and, what, I think 8 and a half, right? Now you don't want to take, because they're 8 and a half, see, they're 8 and a half. I have to show you the whole trimmer. Let me move the trimmer down like this. You don't want to take a half inch off one side because then it'll kind of be unbalanced. And this part here already is scored. So what I, what I wanted to do is like sort of just take the same amount off each side to make this eight inches. So what I did is I took a quarter inch off of each side. Okay, that's what I did. That way I got it to be eight inches, but I'm not sort of lopsided with the pattern. Now it doesn't matter though. You could have just taken the half inch off one side, but that's what I preferred to do. So now I have an eight inch piece. Okay, so it's eight inches and we'll just go ahead and do that again. We'll do it to this piece here. I'm just getting a couple different patterns here. We'll do it to this eight inches. All right, so that's good. I'm just making sure that's the right one. This will be an extra piece. We don't need that right now. This is an extra piece. We don't need that right now. Okay, and one. we'll do one more. Actually, I'll do both of these at the same time. I'll do both of these. Then I can make two boxes if I need to make two boxes. It, I, just, I just gauge by, it seems like, like if you tell me you understand and you could see it well, then I might only need to do one. But if, I, if I'm getting the feeling like that you guys are like not able to see it or understand it, then I might do it one more time. But I plan on just kind of making one of these. But we'll see. That's, that's the plan. Okay, so we have... I mean, maybe I'll complete one, but then we'll do parts of another. So what we want to do now is take, you know, you want to decide on how you're going to put the pieces on. Is it going to be the inside or outside? So the inside one, the inside one we need to cut. We need to trim it a little. So the inside, meaning this, this is a cute pattern for the inside, and this, will, this can be our outside. So for the cute pattern for the inside, we need to trim it a little. We need to make it look like this. We need to trim it. Okay, so that's where the paper trimmer comes in. Now you have, you know, if you have the Stampin' Up! trimmer, it's easy to follow along. And if you have a different trimmer, then um, you can still follow along. But what I would like to do first is I'm going to get out my scoring tool. Now you might, it, okay, if you have, huh, let's, let's explain this. I, I prefer not to score with my, my paper trimmer. This is my Stampin' Paper Trimmer. It comes with a score tool. There's an act. This is a blade. Let me just show you the blade. This is a blade. See, it's sharp. It's a blade. It also comes with a scoring tool. I do so many paper shares and things like that that I'm always cutting. My score, my score little guy gets in the way. My score piece. So personally, I prefer to score with this simply scored. This is this is a good thing to put in a starter kit if you're ever planning on joining Stampin' Up. This is a, a great thing to have. It's a score scoreboard. It's called Simply Scored. So I prefer to score this way, but by all means, score however you want to score. I'm going to score right now at 3 inches and 5 inches before I do my cutting because it tells me where to do my cutting. So let's go ahead and score all these. This is the tool that comes with the score, Simply Scored. So we're going to score at 3 and 5. Okay, don't worry about that middle piece. That just happens to be the old remnant of the card. You're not. Don't fold along that score line, right? Th these are the pieces. So like you want to score at 3 and 5. I'm just going to go ahead and score them all. I can usually do two at a time without them slipping. Right? And then I use the small side of my scoring tool. But again, use your paper trimmer if that's how you want to score. Okay, this just makes it easier if you score first to try to, to do that little diagonal line you need to make. We need to do little diagonal lines. And if you don't have a scored line there, there's like no reference point. Okay, so again... 
I only need to make one full box, but I'll, I'll make at least parts of the second box, like I said. So we'll assemble it. All right, there we go. And that's all I need my scoring tool for now because the rest of the other scoring, this scoring I'm going to actually do with my paper trimmer. The, the, the reason why it's like a little pivot to do. So I don't need my score, my simply scored anymore. But I do need the tool from it. Unless you're using the, the scoring tool, which you can use on your trimmer. But that's just me, personal preference. No right or wrong way. I prefer to score. Okay, let's move this now. I'm going to shut this little arm of my paper trimmer. All right, so now we are here. Okay, let's see. We're going to take this piece here. And what we want to do is we want to do what's called a little pivot. So let's take... So you want to, we want to make... We're going back to this again. We want to make score marks at the half inch and half inch. We want to cut, we want to cut, not score marks. Um, we want to, well, it is a score mark. We want to make a little mark at the half inch point. Then we want to cut this line. Okay, so I'm using, I'm going to use my cutter. I'm going to cut with this, but I need to, I need to know where to cut. So here's a little trick for you. So if you go like this and you go half an inch in and you make a little mark, right? Make a little score mark. That's just a little mark on there, okay? Then you can pull this down a little bit. Pull it down to where you see the groove. You see the groove? Get into the groove. And this is, this is what's like a, called a pivot. So you're pivoting. You're pivoting that, right? You're pivoting that to this line here. See that line there? That's what you're pivoting to. So you're pivoting, meaning that part should line up with that part. I'm not, you don't need to score. We need to cut this, but I'm just trying to show you with my scoring tool. I'm showing you visually, see, just to make sure I got it. So that's where you're going to be cutting. You're, piv you're pulling it down. You're pivoting from a half inch down there. Now, what I like to do, because everything slips, slips and slides all the time on me, I'm going to take a tiny piece of painter's tape because it just seems to me like everything keeps on trying to move when I try to do this. Okay, and I, I just lower this and I can cut. Okay. Thumbs up, or under, if you understand that, I'm going to do it again two, three more times, but hopefully you understand that I'm going to pivot three more times. And um, if you got that, if it makes sense, let me know. If not, hi, Deb, hi, Donna, hi, Janet, 55. <laughs> Janet says, I can't follow along. I got a 55-pound lap dog laying on my lap. That's funny. That's funny. This is what, so now we, these are little pieces you don't want. So now you could do this. You're going to flip it over. Right, flip it over and do that again so you can so you're gonna I'm just my little piece of tape just to hold it. So you're going to half inch mark. Or see, these are quarter inch, so that's half inch mark. Okay, good, gotta get my thumbs up good. And I'm gonna put the little mark there. That's half inch, but I'm pulling down because I can't see. I can't go too close. You can't pivot if you're too close to the top. That's my half half inch mark. I'm pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. And I want to meet that line there. You could you could score it a little first just to make sure you're meeting the line right. Or you could just sort of eyeball it. Yeah, I think I think I'm doing good. It looks good. And then I'm going to pivot back a little. Pivot. Tape. Lower. Cut. Okay. Cut the piece. That's my trick. Well, it's not my trick. It's Sandra's trick. She showed me the little pivot trick. I was like, oh. You know what I was doing before that, before she showed this trick, I was using, what I did when I needed to cut out angles is I was using like a straight edge ruler is what I was doing before. And I like her pivot trick better because I was, like I said, I was using a ruler and trying to line it up. All right. I have to keep moving because the, the light, I have this light overhead light and it keeps like shining right on my cutting board. All right. So we're going to do this again, half inch. So there's two squares. There's a half an inch or two little marks. And you can you can even you can even cut a notch at the top. You don't have to score a notch. You could cut a notch, half inch, pull it down, lay it there, and pivot. Pivot so that it's on the line and it's on the line. See that? It's nice. It's on the line. And I've already lost. How do I lose my tape in that little bit of time? Well, luckily I have tape all over the place. Painter's tape everywhere. Here we go. Okay. 
because I, I use painter's tape for everything. So that's, oh, there it is. It was under there. All right, and one more time. I'm going to turn that. One more time, we're doing the last little line. Okay, half an inch. Oh, that, that was the small side. Pull it down. Hold it there. Pivot, pivot. So that it lines up. Okay, sort of lines up. Oh, a little bit over, a little bit over. I'm cutting it off anyway, so a little bit over. There we go. And tape. No matter what side you tape, I'm just trying to hold it still. Oh, I'm happy. That's what I want. I'm happy with that. So that's the piece. Okay. Now, that's it for that. So now we want to take the other piece and we want to score it. So that's, let's go back to the instructions. We have what we've done. We've done this. We've done this one. We've done this. Cut two pieces, two inch by eight inch. We've done the second one. Score. We've done the scoring at three and five. And now we've cut off these half inch triangles. Okay. Oh, yes, you could do it. You could definitely do it on your scan and cut. And, uh, and the thing is, I make things on my scan and cut all the time, but this is, what's nice about this is I'm using the cards from my kit. So I, can, I couldn't put this in my scan and cut because, well, I guess I could, technically, but you wouldn't have all these, like, we, we didn't waste any material. See, this is only leftover. If you try to do it with your scan and cut, you may have to, like, really, really use some background scanning and really make sure you don't waste any material. But so this is, what I like to do is use up my card kits. So that's why I... I like to do these alternative projects, you know, with my card kits. You can do this with the Joy to the World card kit. Next month, we're having another card kit. Maybe we could do miniature versions of these with the Valentine kit. So, yeah. But definitely, if you're just taking a gigantic piece of designer series paper, by all means, by all means, just uh, go ahead and do that. So, now we want to get, so for the scoring, we want to score it one inch. So, we're going to turn, we're going to move this over. Move this over like this. We're going to score it one inch. So, this is... One inch on each side, it's a two inch wide, so we're going to make that little mark. This side, we're just making a mark like this. And this time we're not cutting, we're scoring. We're scoring at the angle. So leave, I'm leaving this up. This is my personal preference. I'm going to go down and I'm going to pivot. Meaning, can you see that? I pivoted. Make sure there's, there's a big glare on my light. Hopefully you can see that. So I pivot. I'm going from one inch like that down to here. I'm going to kind of lightly, I'm going to, before I deeply score it, I want to just lightly make sure I'm in the right spot, which I am uh, like that. There you go. Now I can deeply score it. Once you get it to the right spot, you can sort of deeply score it. Okay. Because you just kind of testing that you're in the right spot. Okay. I'll do that a few more times. So you want, so basically I'm scoring these at an inch. That I'm doing this four times on this party favor. Okay, flip it around, do it again. So there's, I already have the inch mark there. So now I just need to pivot. So there's my inch mark. Pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. Yeah, right like that. Just lightly score to make sure you got it, which I do. And then deeply score. Once you get it, you know, you meet your mark there. Once you meet that mark here, let me get the angle. Then you kind of, then you go a little deeper and you can, okay. So far, so good. Now we're going to flip it around and do it again. So we're at the one inch. So we have the one inch here. One inch, one inch. Make a little notch. Score a little notch up there. Okay, move it down. Pivot a little bit. Pivot. I'm just making sure my hands aren't blocking the way from that line to that line. Okay, making sure I'm kind of doing it lightly. And once it's once it's good, once I see that I got the right angle, I do it deeper. Okay. And one more time. Now, 
No, I don't think of these things. This is my friend. Well, I think of these things because I think of these things, but I, this time I didn't think of this one. This one was my friend Sandra. Sandra Lowe gets credit. She, she's the one that learned how to do it, and then she taught a group of us. Like we were on, we were doing a Zoom thing, and then she taught us on Zoom, and she made one with some um, Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper. She made one, and then I, <clears throat> I followed along, and now I'm showing my crafty friends. So that's how to do it. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about the holes, and punch in the holes, and what you can put inside. Okay, so, and I'm going to show you how I string how I string it up. So that was it. That's 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 all there is to it, for the two parts. Now, don't go glue in the sides yet because when I did this, what happened is I just let me explain this part. Don't go gluing these together yet because and, unless you have what's called a big kick, a big kick. I don't have a big kick. I have or I do have a big kick. This is we are memories keepers. This is something else. This might be a I forget what this one is. But if you have one that's bigger and there's more, this this one here is a hole puncher. See the little hole, the little tiny hole puncher? But I can't fit all six pieces. I can't fit one, two, three, right? Four or five. I can't fit six pieces of cardstock in there without slipping. So, where's the one I just did? It shouldn't have a hole in it. Here it is, here it is. Here's the one I just did. I want to make sure that it doesn't have a hole in it. That's the one I did earlier. So what I did is my little trick was, here was my little trick. I, I set it up like this and I just punched the hole in half of it at a time. Okay, so I set it up, but I didn't glue it yet. So that was my little trick. Because when I tried to do all six pieces at a time, it slipped off. So here's what I gotta do. You're gonna move these off to the side. In other words, get these back flaps out of the way. Get the back flaps out of the way. Stick the front flap in like this. See, because you need it to overlap to punch the holes. Does that make sense? I hope this makes sense. I mean, please let me know. See, that's what you need to do. These little flaps are out of the way. So now when I go in and do my punch, see the little hole punch? I could, oh, and you can set this up to the depth you need to go in. So I set this up ahead of time to the depth I need to push in. That's a launcher from here. Memory keepers, but if you have what's called a big bite, or I think it's called a big bite. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm getting a thumbs up. See, pretty cool. I punched the three holes. Now, technically, I could have punched all six holes at once. If you have a big bite, I guess, like I said, that's what it's called. Then you could punch all six holes at once. You can punch like 25 holes at once with that thing. But this one was just a smaller one, so I can only punch three holes at a time. So now I'm going to back up. I'm going to get rid of these back ones just to get them out of the way. And I'm going to punch the other three holes. Where'd the other half go? Okay, let's put this back in like that. <laughs> so, back like that. So, again, just depends. And if you have a bigger hole puncher, by all means, you can get through all six layers at once. I'll show you that in a second, the all six layers. But I just want to get rid of these back layers just to get them out of the way. Stick my hole puncher in there like that. See, and it goes in the same depth, see? It's the same distance inwards because, okay, because I have this marked off. So that's my, that's my little hole punching trick. And now when I do this, look, now, now all my holes line up. I have six holes. <laughs> I help flatten the learning curve. Yeah, that's because I, you should see how many, I, what, what happened is first, I started punching holes separately like this on my sofa and then and then like I did them separately on this part but then I did them on the wrong part and then they didn't line up and I was like no so I had to come up with a trick I had to I had to come up with a crafty friend a trick for my crafty friends now I'm going to just adhere them together since this is the inside this piece right that's some uh seal plus it's really good stuff just put that inside and now I'm going to show you how I strung it up so you're going to so if you have one of those like really cool, uh, what do they call like like say you're a knit you're a knitter and you have one of those really cool needles that you can put through the holes with your twine, it might be easier to to use a needle. But I didn't have a needle like that, so I was using like the pokey tool. I was poking, I was getting my string through this way. So I put the I put the string in there and I was pushing it through like that with my little pokey tool, and that's how I got my string through. So I'm going to show you how I, how I. I'm going to unstring one just to show you how it's strung together. 
and that's it. So you can put your little candies in there, and I'll show you what's in this one. I did take out some. So here's my string. I'm going to untie this. Oh, and by the way, I just put a koala on it. So here, let me just show you that too. So this is, this is a paper pumpkin tutorial after all. So you take your koala, right, and you, you bend it, and you put, you put your little koala on there. See how I did that? I put, the, I put the little saying down here. So you could put your little koala on there. I did it on this side. See? The reason I did it on this side, this is just my another tip and trick. I love these koalas. Somebody put them on a seesaw. I was so happy to see that someone put them on a seesaw. Okay, so there, like this. You want to you attach the koalas to the side so that your box opens freely. See? Your, you want your box to open freely without the koalas getting in the way. So attach them to the sides, like attach them to that side or the other side. Okay? And then, then that way they stay there when your box opens and closed. And then I put the little heart between them, pop the little heart up with some dimensionals. Yeah, floss threader. Thank you. That was it. The floss threader. Oh, that's a good idea for like the dental floss. But I was, I was thinking floss threader, like definitely I was thinking of that little plastic needle that you use for like thick twine and get that through there. But anyway, then you put your little heart there and your little sentiment there and you're good to go. You could put a little Happy New Year sentiment on it. That's from one of my old stamp sets. Uh, get well soon if you're putting something in there. You know, enjoy. This is this one's from the Pampered Playful Pets, I think, or Pampered Pets stamp set. There's a little one called Enjoy. That's where I got that from. You are on my mind. This one I got out of the paper pumpkin kit. You are on my mind, stamped in rich raspberry. Okay, anyway, now let me untie it. And then I'm done. I'm just going to show you. Like, I'm untying it and showing you how it's tied, how I strung it through. See, I'm going to see how you just do it like this. Like you're just going from outside in. It's like here, you take your outside. So you want to make sure you string it from the outside through. So string it here first and then there and then through the middle. So do one side and it kind of makes an S shape when you're done. Then back through the middle. So you want to start out on the outside flaps, string it around through the middle, out the, out the middle, out the other side. See, so I hope that's a good angle to show you how I strung it. And then it's so easy to tie up. And these really are faster once you make more of them. I, did, I made a lot of these to practice, and it does get faster and faster. And, and actually, doing the assembly line process I'm always talking about. Then you just pull it up and you tie it with a, tie it with a bow. Do, the assembly line process is get all your pieces, cut all your pieces, score all your pieces, you know, get, get them all ready, and then you just have a little... Then when you're ready to decorate, it's a lot easier. So here's what I put inside this one, just to give you an idea of the size of it. I put a Lindor chocolate. But you can put, they do make really tiny hand sanitizers. You can put in there, and I put these little, you can put a, this is a little baby chapstick. I got this from Big Lots. The big chapstick doesn't fit. I tried the big chapstick, and I tried hand sanitizer, and for the, the Purell does not fit. The Purell hand sanitizer doesn't fit. But I just want to show you a couple things that would fit. And that's what's in these, these boxes here. You see these little boxes here? The Get Well Soon box and the Enjoy box. The ones I showed how to make in my last tutorial. And I showed these little bath fizzies. The bear bath fizzies. Bubbles fizzy bears. Milk and honey bath fizzies. These actually fit in, in the party favor box. See? So you can stick the little bear in there. And it does fit. So, this, and of course you can modify this design. You can make it l longer than 2 by 8 but I just didn't want to try to do any fa fancy math. Of course, it's not super tight, but you can get it in there. I didn't want to do a lot of fancy math, so I just said, okay, I'm going to use the measurements that my friend Sandra gave me. Cute! Okay, so you can put things in it. Put things in your box. And then you can put little things like mini Tic Tacs. There's some mini Tic Tacs. You can fit this little, these little miniature Hershey miniature candies. Mini Ghirardelli squares. You can't fit the full mini, you can't fit the full squares though. You can't fit lip gloss, the, the full lip gloss. And if you're going to put the bigger things, put the bigger things on the bottom first. Like the mini Ghirardelli square, put that on the bottom first. Because it's a pyramid, right? Then you put your little candies and then followed by the smaller candies laying on their sides. And string first, always string first and then stuff. String your box, stuff your box, and then tie your box. And that is how... And this one doesn't fit. And the Lindors are perfect because they just put one of those in there. That is how to make the party favor 
treat box right in time for New Year's using your paper pumpkin kit. So you can make, yeah, it does hold a lot. That's why I wanted to show you the visual. So that's why I wanted to show you. So this is now you can make from one card. Well, you can make one from one card, but you're going to use two different cards because you want to alternate the colors. So when you're done, so you have, so one card will really make one party favor box, right? But then you're going to alternate the cards. You're going to have these pieces left over. So from two cards, you make two boxes with two pieces left over for bookmarks. Or you can take these and use them to make the little tag treats. And when I say tag treats, that's this, that's this here. Like you can make these little tag treats or something, you know, something else, alternative projects with your paper pumpkin kit. Well, that's all for now. I wish you a very happy new year. I'll be coming back on, hopefully for a new year special, doing something with a, some tips for the scan and cut, because I know a lot of you got some from Santa this year. So I'll be doing some scan and cut tutorials next. I think I'm all paper pumpkined out. This is video number five for this paper pumpkin kit, and I think, I think I'm done now. Poke a fork in me. We're done with the, we're done with the berry comforting paper pumpkin kit. It, the next kit I'll be talking about soon is in January, and it's called, and it's it's called sending love, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a Valentine's kit. So there's a link in the description of this video to my website, and you can subscribe to Paper Pumpkin there. You're not billed until after the 10th of January, so even if you sign up now. You don't have to spend any money. They're only $22 a month, for including shipping. The Sending Love Kit also has an add-on for only $10 that includes little boxes for Valentine's treats. I can't wait to get the add-on January 1st where subscribers are allowed to get the add-on. So this kit is, is available to, um, the refills are available for $10 for this kit, although the full kits are already gone, but the, the refills are available. So that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef, and Happy New Year, and see you next time.